everybody, I am Nico D, so today we are gonna take a look at Manjaro for the Raspberry Pi 4. So Manjaro is a 64-bit operating system, so ARM 64, that compared to the 32-bit operating system of Raspberry Pi OS. So that gives a few advantages, but also a few disadvantages. So with the advantages, it will perform better with 64-bit tasks, of course. The disadvantages are that you are missing a lot of software that is written for the 32-bit operating systems. So no hardware accelerated video decoding and no good GPU drivers. So this isn't the best for gaming, but it is a very good operating system for desktop tasks. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, but using it doesn't give you the excuse to say that you are running Arch. For that you also need to be an idiot. So first thing we need to download Manjaro of course. So for that I type Raspberry Pi Manjaro downloads and here downloads Manjaro and here we go to editions, their arm, here you see all the images there are. So there is one for the Pinebook Pro, for the Pinebook, for Raspberry Pi 4, for the Rock Pi 4B, for the Rock Pi 4C, the Rock Pro 64, Kadas Film 1, 2, 3 and the Kadas Edge. And also for the Odroid N2 and N2 Plus. So I'm gonna download the one for Raspberry Pi 4, Mati. I like the Mati desktop, so that's what I'm gonna download. So once that is downloaded, all we need to do is burn it to our SD card. So I'm using GNOME Disk for that in Linux. You use whatever you want, so Win32 Disk Imager or Balina Etcher for Windows. And once that is done, all we need to do is put the SD card in our Raspberry Pi and boot it. So when we boot for the first time we are greeted with this window. So to choose our keyboard layout, so I'm using a UK keyboard. So I need to go down all the way, here it is, then choose my username, no group, then full name, then my password, again password for my username and now password for the root, again password for the root, now choose my time zone, so Europe, again all the way down. What? I saw Antarctica? How many people will live there? Okay, here is Europe. So Brussels. Now my local, I will choose English, Great Britain. And the host name Manjaro or Pi 4. That's it, now it can boot into the desktop. So the first thing I'll do is add my toolbar apps to see the CPU frequency and the temperature. So I add a command, CPU frequency monitor and system monitor. And on the top toolbar I add network monitor. So I arrange them like I want them to. And for the system monitor I also choose memory and swap space and then for the commands I set this so I can see the temperature. I've already told you that Manjaro is based on Arch. There isn't that much difference with the Debian based operating system. One of the major differences is the package manager. So with the Debian based operating system to install and update we use apt or apt-get while in Manjaro we use pacman for that. So to upgrade we do sudo pacman dash capital S Y and U. That's it, that is the same as sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrades. And to install software we do sudo pacman dash capital S and then the package name. So here I've installed Blender and GIMP. So now let's try GIMP. A good thing about Manjaro is that it uses very recent versions of software. So here it is GIMP 2.10. And I will draw something for you. Ain't it pretty? So that works. But if we try to open Blender, 
Then we see that Blender doesn't work. So it needs OpenGL 3.3 or higher and that's not available here. But we can still use Blender with the command line to do benchmarks of course. So let's do a NicoD Blender benchmark. So it is clocked at the default clock of 1.5 GHz right now. I am using a power bank to power it because with my power supplies I always have got under voltage problems. It is not that it are bad power supplies. They work great with all other SBCs but the Raspberry Pi is just an annoying beast. This has always existed on Raspberry Pis and I don't get that they still have fixed it. But well, with my power bank it is powered at 5.2 volts, that's what it wants. And the power bank can also supply 3 amps per port. So that's more than enough for the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see it consumes 1.2 amps clocked at the default clocks. To know that I also use a fan and that fan also consumes a very little bit. 0.2 amps or so. So the maximum temperature at 1.5 GHz is about 60 degrees Celsius. I am using a fan and a big heatsink. So the heatsink from the Tinker board. The fan is only powered with 3.3 volts but that's more than enough to keep it cool. So the result of Blender is 16 minutes and 2 seconds. So let's save that in a file and in a minute we will overclock it and then do the benchmarks again. You might have seen the result of 7-zip also. So I've done that first but I'll show it afterwards. So first I needed to install 7-zip so sudo pacman dash capital S P 7-zip and then to do the benchmark 7ZB. So the result is 6 towns and 4 MIPS for decompression. So I also saved that but you've already seen that. Before we overclock it let's first check the YouTube playback with Firefox. So it doesn't have got hardware accelerated video playback but that doesn't mean it can't do video playback. So it does 1080p pretty well. There aren't that many dropped frames once it has started but it does it all on the CPU so overclocking will also improve this. I'm sorry there is no audio, the audio works perfectly fine but my capture device doesn't want to record it. It is a new capture device, it is very bad but it does record video in a lot better quality than my previous capture cards. So now let's finally overclock it. So for that I'm gonna use Genie. But clearly Genie isn't installed yet. So I'm gonna have to install it. So sudo pacman dash s Genie. And then sudo Genie to open Genie with sudo writes. And then we go to the boots partition. And there we open config.txt. And there we add this. So I'm gonna clock it to 2000 right now. And I'm gonna put the GPU at 600 and over voltage at 4. And save that and reboot. So when I boot now it is clocked to 2 GHz. So now let's do again the 7-zip benchmark. So the results now is 7812. So that's quite a bit more than what it was. So it was 6004. And now 7812, so that's about 20% faster. And now again do the NicoD Blender benchmark. So it consumes a bit more now, so it consumes about 1.7 to 1.8 amps. So that's about a half amp more than when it was clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. Here you can see the heatsink that I'm using and the fan. So it is quite a big heatsink for the Raspberry Pi. And it is sufficient. So the temperature, maximum temperature is about 75 degrees at 2 GHz. But I'm not sure if the Raspberry Pi throttles or not because the Raspberry Pi doesn't show that. So the result at 2 GHz is 13 minutes and 14 seconds. So compared to the 16 minutes and 2 seconds, that's quite a bit faster, almost 3 minutes faster. 
and it is stable, so why would you not use it a bit higher clocked than 1.5 GHz, but you do need to have a good cooling solution for it. When idling with the on-demand governor the Raspberry Pi 4 consumes about 0.6 amps, so about 2.5 watts, but again with the fan. So that's gonna be it for today. I like Manjaro a lot, I've used it the last 3 days and it is very functional. There isn't that much software pre-installed on it, so you will need to install everything yourself what you want. But I find that an advantage, you don't have many programs that you will never use. It looks very good, it feels very good, it feels a lot better than Raspberry Pi OS. For gaming it isn't yet the best operating system, for that we will need good GPU drivers for the Raspberry Pi and ARM64. They are working on that. I hope Raspberry Pi quickly will switch to 64 bits. It is just a shame that they are still working on 32 bits. So that's my conclusion. Manjaro is a very nice operating system. It works very well on other SBCs also. So it uses the mainline kernel. That is a very good thing. There are a lot of desktop environments available for it. So try them all out. They all look very good. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you will like my video. See you all later. Bye.